Twin Cities, we are back for the best and sweetest show in the Twin Cities. Season three of Candy Fresh you continues oh, in yeah. 2019. And we are back with another one. I'm your host, Kalik, and this is... Anahita. The one and only. We got a really, really dope lineup for you guys. First, we're going to start off with Chris and Jan Pennington, the owners of Can Can Wonderland. Give them a hand, y'all. <laughs> yes. And yeah. shortly after that, we'll have an interview with Mondo, the black tech guy. Hey. That's my boy. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Who you got? I got Dario Otero, the guy of 360 Youth Lenses here. Oh, yeah. Give it a hand. Give it a hand. And the new rules very own Christopher Webley is here. Webley. Yes, sir. But we do not fly solo because we love to dance. So why not have a DJ, other nice, known as DJ Aquil? Aquil. Yes, sir. So. We're going to turn it up a notch, guys. You already know what's going on. You guys are watching another episode of Candy, candy Fresh. Fresh. Woo! It's that Candy Fresh. Got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on. Get your shine on. Candy Fresh gonna show the... Beyonce, can you I was feeling that. Let the intro last a little longer next time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back, and I have with me Chris and Jen Pennington, the owners of Can Can Wonderland. Give them a hand, y'all. Yeah. Man, it is so exciting to have you guys up here. I, I don't even know where to start. Like, tell me about you guys, where you grew up a little bit, and then like how you kind of even imagine getting to the point of where you're at with owning your own place. Sure. Um, well, I, there, so there's four founders, and I think we all have different things that we brought to the table, but I grew up on a fruit and vegetable farm in Wisconsin, so I was called Strawberry Girl <laughs> when I was a kid, and in the fall, we had pumpkins, and we had 3,000 people that would come out to our farm every weekend, and we had a warehouse where we sold local artist stuff. Mm -hmm. Our neighbors would come over, and they'd play live music. We had food and drink. My mom and her friends painted murals everywhere. And it was this vibrant community gathering place. Y'all so, did some of everything, right? Yeah, it's, and so there's, so there's something for everybody. And so like that had a huge impact on me. And I, I wanted to bring that into Can Can. That was really important to me. I did not grow up on a fruit and vegetable <laughs> farm. Uh, I'm from Wisconsin, though. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. Gotcha. Um, just a goofball in Madison, Wisconsin, pretty much. <laughs> uh, I went to school up here. Uh, I got involved with the Soap Factory Art Gallery. For those of you guys who know okay, Soap Factory. Okay, okay, Soap Factory. All right, all right. It's actually a really good time to come around Soap Factory, if, if you know about that. We're kind of struggling right now. Um, got involved with Soap Factory. It was a wonderful, amazing uh, spot. And we uh, started um, the Haunted Basement. Yeah. Was, oh. Yeah, it was like kind of like a rated R. That was the hardcore. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's let's Back chat about that. that a little later. All right. It was, it was it was supposed to be it was for the volunteer <laughs> show, oh, like man. the volunteer art show, and mm -hmm. everyone was putting art up the wall, and we said, well, can we just do the basement? And they said, yeah. Man. So we started the haunted basement that way. The power of asking. That's like really all it, it takes. We it was just garbage down there. Five years. <laughs> it took a while. And, and he a couple days having to shovel out a hundred year old rendered animal fat for a couple of days. Oh, oh, place. soap, soap. Okay, I was like, hold yeah. on a second. Factory, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. So, uh, and I guess that's how I got into uh, that's when the art for me because I was an art person, kind of, yeah. uh, and that's when art to me took a different shape when I could have all these people to interact with and just doing a performative kind of thing mm -hmm. and like did mini golf for the Walker, right, Walker Arts right. did mini golf. Okay. Did that? that Walker, was also artist, artist-led mini golf, mm -hmm. totally cool. And so it's like, well, why don't you know? I was also a public school teacher for a long time. You did some everything, man. I've been, yeah, I taught over north, <laughs> uh, north high school for a bunch of years, and yeah. then uh, northeast uh, at Edison. And uh, eventually, I just thought, well, maybe I should try to. You know, I'm like 40. 
I got two kids. I if I don't too. ever try to do this art thing, I'm never going to do it. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you look that. Thanks. Thanks. I said can't. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you ended up just putting it all into like sugar and spices, everything nice, and you put it all together mm -hmm. and curated can can. Yeah. Whoa, who would have imagined like that blend would just create that space? So what was the challenges getting to that point? Oh, well, I mean, it was a lot of challenges because we really started in 2010 oh. and we didn't open to the public till 2017. So this is what they call is a famous line. So y'all wasn't with me when I was shooting in the gym. Yeah. So this, this, this is mean that y'all was putting in some work way behind the scenes that nobody's seen. Let's yeah. hear about that. Yeah, so in 2010, um, I met Joe Spencer. He was the director of arts and culture. And I, I was like, hey, we're thinking about doing this thing. And he's like, he said, oh, that's so cool. And he introduced us to Mike Hom, who's the director of parks for St. Paul. And at first, we were kind of looking at doing something outdoors and temporary. And we looked at a few different park spaces. But the footprint wasn't big enough or, or it just wasn't quite right. And so then we got connected with Minnesota Public Radio, and they wanted to give us this, the space in front of their studio. Mm -hmm. And that was awesome. Um, and their board approved it, and we were all excited. And then the, there turned out to be a variance on the property because of light rail construction. Uh. And so that killed it. And so then we happened to um, have just moved to St. Paul, and we lived by the Schmidt Brewery. And so the development started happening at the Schmidt Brewery, and we're like, oh, that'd be so cool if we could walk to work and reduce our <laughs> carbon footprint. And so we started to try to get um, land at the Schmidt Brewery, and and then uh, Art Place America was formed, and we... Um, place after place after place. We, uh, we applied yeah. for This is like year four at this point. we got it, and it was amazing. It was like... When Hallelujah, was, right? He was yeah. like, oh, my God. Yeah, and so, but we ended up not getting property at Schmidt Brewery, and so then we found the spot we're in now. Mm -hmm. But it, so it took seven years. Seven and years. It was a lot of work. Yeah, it's perseverance. <laughs> yeah. So what kept the hunger for it going? Because I know, like, after you get so many no's, like, yeah. and that's why I want to ex help people exemplify, like, exemplify that portion of, like, what kept you hungry for it even after getting a no so many times? Um, I think that some of the other stuff that we'd been involved with that had been successful and we, we just felt in our hearts that it was a really great idea and we just kept trying and it's like, okay, try again, try harder, try different, talking to different people mm -hmm. and we, you know, we got a lot of no's but then we also got a lot of yeses from people who were really bought in. So oh, yeah. <clears throat> we, just, we just kept going. <laughs> That's a heck of a story. And then you were there the whole time, right? Give me one round of applause for that, because I know so many people that after attempting the first time, if it doesn't work, they just give up. Yeah. Man. So what have been some of the highlights of having the space once you got it going? Like, what, did, yeah. what was the shocker to you about people's reaction of going into your space? Oh, I mean, we were shocked at how many people love how much people loved it there's a vibe and the yeah. crowds and and i mean just felt lots of love by the community and mm -hmm. people embraced it we we'd have artists and different groups that would call us and be like hey can i do this on your stage and we're like yeah of course you can we'd love that and it was it was just so cool and mm -hmm. you know so celtic junk Junction is yeah. across the street from us, and one of their dance teachers came over and was having a drink at the bar. Yeah. And just out of that conversation, she en she ended up doing our Tappy Hour program, which is every Friday. It's mm -hmm. group tap dance lessons. Word. And so now that's been happening for two years. And, I ain't you know, gonna try it. so <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just it's really cool. It's that really is cool. awesome. Yeah. Well, so where is it at? Let the people know where they can find where it is and location-wise and how to find you guys on social media so they can yeah. keep involved on the events you guys go at, going on there. Sure. Um, so we're in St. Paul. We're in the Creative Enterprise Zone just off University. If you turn um, north on Pryor, right by where the Menards is, mm -hmm. we're just four blocks down that way. A couple blocks away. Yep. And we're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and we have about 12 to 15 um, events that we put on every single week and some are all ages and some are 21 plus so mm -hmm. we have something for everyone and um, and then it's just hashtag can can wonderland man yeah. well give these guys a round of applause this is jen and chris pennington of can can wonderland really appreciate you guys for just following through with your dreams it means a lot and i get to enjoy it too so it's even better oh. Long live Candy Fresh. Long Thank live you guys for having us. My man. Hey, yes, sir. Once again, guys, we'll see you in a second. Woo!
rush, got the new now next If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on Get your shine on Candy Fresh gon' show up, get your shine on It's that Candy Fresh, got the new now next If you a dope artist in the city, come on all right, welcome back, guys. We have two amazing guests yes. at once. It's a two for one. Two for one. So I am chatting with both of them. We're going to talk to all of them uh -huh. together. But this is the one and only Dario Otero of Youth Lens 360. And right here with me, I got my guy Mondo, the black tech guy. Ooh. Give him a hand, y'all. Turn up. We are going to hear about what they are doing separately. We're going to hear about what they're doing collectively, but let's dive right in. So we've had a couple of run-ins. Well, more so. I know more about him than he does about me. Isn't that kind of creepy? But uh, <laughs> it's cool, guys. I got the PR background. So we met through the um, Giant Steps platform, and so I know your work through the Youth Lens 360 is immaculate. You were telling me stories about what you did for the youth and the Haiti situation. So let's just take it back real quick. What is Youth Lens real quick? And then we'll go we'll go even more back. All right. Uh, it's simple. Youth Lens 360 is a youth marketing company. It gives young entrepreneurs an opportunity to test out their skills in uh, the work that we do in contracting. But then they're also starting their own businesses at the same time. Okay. Ooh, Little entrepreneurs. Yeah. I think that is a smart thing. So how did that even come about? Where did this concept come from? Yeah. Um, I was always an entrepreneur. Never liked traditional education and... Uh, Graduated out of high school with a 1.8 GPA, just never felt successful, uh, but always in my family's eyes was successful. And uh, I just knew that fa that feeling of being successful mm -hmm. and wanted to give that and pass that on. Uh, so I was an educator for a number of years, and I just always thought that we should get outside the building, do stuff that's real world, and be able to actually make money. I don't think there's any wrong for young people making money. Uh, so putting all that together, I started Youth Lands 360 as a company that would actually go and uh, be able to make money in this education. Um, we focus 14 to 24, but more on an 18 to 24 range that a lot of people are forgetting about. Okay. Yes, sir. Man, wow. that is much needed. But wow. That is amazing. Yeah, totally. Let's jump over here real yeah. quick to my man, Mondo. My man was on, he was on the cover rolling out. <laughs> rolling out. Tell us about that and just kind of give us a little clue of who you are, what you're about. So no doubt. So I, I started in tech in 2010, literally just stumbled into it, right? Like I was watching a TV show. I'm like, oh, that's dope. You're talking about apps. You're saying I can go build dope apps and people are going to use it. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Um, so at the time, I was an educator, St. Paul Public Schools. I think that's why me and Dario rock because we have that, that spirit to like connect with young people and then just pass those positive vibes. And for me, I'm just like, man. I need to solve some problems, right? You tell me a problem like kids don't know how to read or black people getting pulled over and not treated the right way or like, you know, school being boring. Like, how do we build tech around those problems to like create dope solutions? So that's my lane. That's my lane. Uh, I'm just, I feel so full already, man. <laughs> y'all getting my heart, getting all big and pumping. Man, so with that, how did you guys find yourselves getting to the point of wanting to help others? Because I know so many people get caught in the rat race of, trying to fend for themselves. So what made you keep the community involved within your hustle and bustle of everyday life? Um, I, I believe in listening to young people. And I was uh, out at an, uh, actually, we're shooting on set somewhere. And uh, one of the young people was like, man, I keep seeing that guy with that shirt on. Like, he always wears that shirt. Yeah. And I, he's like, you should talk to him. And so we had a conversation. I found out a little bit about what he was doing with apps and, and uh, tech. And never saw myself as a tech person myself, but yeah. we were doing a lot of tech ourselves. Um, and so we had a conversation about like what it is he's doing, what I'm doing, and we said, man, what if we can merge those two things together? So you're building apps and tech, you have social impact in what you're doing for the community. Mm -hmm. I'm working with these young people in the community, but they really should be building these apps with you, marketing the apps with you. Right. And so we created something together. And I'll let them tell you what that was. Oh yeah, I wanna hear all about it. Hey. <laughs> So yeah, so you know, we was really rocking it out, and uh, we we created uh, this platform called Team Studios, um, Team standing for Tech, Entrepreneurship, Art, and Media, and like how do we bring those things together? Because uh, I feel like everybody's working in these silos, right? And nobody's collabing with each other, right? But like if you get these dope young creative cats that are like on social media doing dope storytelling, right? And you like bring that over to the tech space and start start telling stories and marketing these dope apps, it's gonna be a wrap, right? And it's it's gonna happen in 2019. 
speak yeah. that into existence. Yeah. I love the acronym TEAM, T-E-A-M. I mean, right, it's not an individual thing. But let's talk about how you break it down. So how do you, do you educate? Do you train? Is there activities that they do? Do they sit classroom style? I'd love to learn about that. Uh, yeah, so, you know, as Youth Lens, we're always out chasing these contracts and working with companies, uh, the state of Minnesota, uh, everybody in, uh, you know, from organizations, nonprofits like Bush Foundation. And so that naturally was like, how do we bring this into a space where we can do it bigger? Um, young people are always creating, but they very rarely know how creative they are and how to cash in on that. Um, so one of the things that team did was say, well, yeah, it's cool to have like tech and um, arts and media, but the key being entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. Like, how do you drive for, hey, listen, you're an entrepreneur. How do you open that door for a young person and say, walk through that door? Um, if you choose to walk through that door and then fall back down and, and look at the other options that you have, you can go to college because now you know what you want to go for. Absolutely. And you can, you know, you can still go and do whatever else it is that you want to do because you know that you could be a business owner. And that's a key aspect of what we're doing. So you're like turning these youth into visionaries. They can see past their current environment. And so with that, I'm sure you guys had the same thought process going up as how were you able to see past where you were at? I mean, I <laughs> that's crazy, right? So like growing up, my dad always like planted these gems in me that I could be Superman and change the world. So I wake up every day like, right, like here's, here's my S on my chest, right? It's a black tech guy, right? So like never have I like wavered in thinking that I can do some some crazy, amazing things. And then when I rock with Dario and he's like, yo, if we continue to work with these youth and like put that S on their chest too, and then like plant that seed that it's about everybody else, right? And like give first, it's just going to be a wrap. I feel like one last thing, like, Black people are the most creative people on the planet to me, right? Like we get into art, we get into fashion, we get into design. It, it, it don't even matter. But we haven't gotten into tech yet as a whole community. But when we do, like we, we're gonna, <laughs> hey, let's say this for the first time right here. Like, so there's a book called The Tanning of America done by Steve Stout, right? Where he completely disrupted it, right? But our book, you know, as we move forward in this journey is gonna be The Tanning of Tech because we feel like when we bring in these young people into the tech space, like that's gonna be the book written. So it was said first on Candy Fresh, so yeah. boom, y'all lock it in. Hey. You heard it here first. <laughs> yes, sir. So I let's jump it. ahead like five, 10 years. Like what is the outlook? What do you guys wanna do at a larger scope beyond the Twin Cities? Uh, we definitely plan on scaling. That's you know what we have to do. And uh, as Mondo always talks about something called blitz scaling, which is how do you take something that's really um, you know working? So we know it's working because we've been doing it for years. We're just coining it with this name, Team Studios, and then we're looking for those bigger customers, uh, the Targets, the Cargills, the Medtronics, uh, that are all trying to figure out how to market to this youth. Um, and but they're using companies that are marketing to youth, but they're not using youth to market, right? Yeah, so creating an advertising agency around that whole idea and, and knowing that these young people are creatives and they also could take the template for what they've learned and then apply it to their own business when they're, when they're done and rolling out. And they know how to do tech, they know how to do ads, you know, they know how to do marketing. So it's all, That's it's all, win -win yeah, it's oh, a win-win. Yeah. I love that. Man, when you touch on the whole fact of like, I always say dreams don't work until you do. And so once you got the moment of actually creating the space, how did that feel for you? Like, that's something that I always love to thrive in is that moment when you finally have done something. You're like, this is all an idea at one point in time and it's actually here. So how was that success for you? And how did that influence other people in your circle? Because you guys are leaders. So let's hear about that. Man, I mean, I'd, I'd shout out to people from CanCan, -Can, right, where they're telling this story about, like, hey, we, we started this in 2010 and didn't open up our doors six years later, right? And I feel like it's the same thing. Like, I've been on this mission in tech since 2010, same thing, right? And now I'm just getting to the point where I'm like, oh, I'm learning this. I'm knowing how to do it. I, I understand best practices. So, honestly, it is that resilience piece, right? It's like if we have that stick to and keep killing it, eventually, like, the light's just going to shine. So. Look, hey, hey, we're gonna kill it this year, bro. Hey, all right. All right. <laughs> and there is yes, so much. That's right. Give it up. There is so much behind the scenes, especially for creatives, that goes on. I mean, you're you're talking seven plus years to bring something to fruition, um, and it's not always an easy road. So, with that said, we want to give you guys praise. We want to help, you know, work together as a community. So, where can we support you? Where can we find you? How can we work together? Let's tell everybody in the beautiful audience yeah. about that. Uh, yes, you could go to uh, teamstudios.org. Uh, you could go to youthlens360.com. Mm -hmm. You can go to theblacktechguy.com. Yeah. Either one of those is going to lead you right yeah, back to the same place. The Black Tech Guy, I'm every social media, right? But 
bro. Yeah. I'm just excited, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, All right. Well, give it up one more time for these fine gentlemen. Yes, give it up, give it up. Got the new now next If you a dope artist in the city Come on and get your shine on Get your shine on Candy fresh gon' show up Get your shine on we could keep dancing, but we got some fine ladies up here. We need to talk to these young ladies. How are you, my lovelies? Good, how are you? Good. Let's get your names real quick. My name is Cadence. My name is Nakaya. And how old are you, lovely ladies? I'm 12. I'm 10. Kid, did you hear that? 12 and 10. A round of applause on that real quick. 12 and 10. I got with me who? Cadence. And? Nakaya. And you are how old, my dear? 12 years old. I'm 10. Oh my gosh. Starting early. Starting early. So, Kali, these two are Dario and Mondo's little ladies that are working so hard with their organization, but they've yeah. got a own little product going on themselves. You ladies are vlogging. I need to hear about this. Oh Tell my. me about it. Start us off. Who's going in? Tell us what you do. <laughs> I love it. We vlog and we entertain a lot of people. Ooh, okay. Yay. Um, well, this all started off was one day we were on my grandpa's house and we were on the porch and my dad, we, it was me, Nakaya. Y'all had lemonade? Dad. No. Uh. <laughs> it was me, my dad, Nakaya, and my uncle Dante. And my dad was like, oh, I didn't tell the girls about this yet, but I want them to start their own channel. So me and Nakaya got all geeked up about it. <laughs> and, you know, we were, yeah, like we already watch YouTube and other people vlogging. So, you know, we're trying to build up and get up there. So uh, we have like four videos out. We need to get our game back on and start posting more. Oh yeah, but, yeah. What are you ladies vlogging about? Cause you know, YouTuber to YouTuber, this is like a real hustle. But like, I'm gonna subscribe to you real quick. But talk about the content because people need to know what you're vlogging about. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, we are one of our vlogs is Nickelodeon Universe. We've been to Valley Fair and we have my cousin as one of our guests. Um, we just like to do fun things, you know, challenges and all other fun stuff. Yeah, what do you think, Nikai? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite part about the whole project and being on YouTube where people can actually see you instead of you watching them? You know, a phrase that I always use is consume less and create more. And you guys are taking a part of that. And that's really cool to start so early. So how does it feel to actually have people be kind of viewers and fans of what you guys do? Well, I like that we can entertain people and um, just make them laugh and smile every day. Give them a round of applause, y'all. All, All oh, right, man. so we can't leave without knowing where we can subscribe. So what is the name of your vlog, and how do we find you, ladies? Um, well, you can just go on YouTube. Our channel's called K and Kaya. It's spelled K-A-Y and, but it's not the word and. It's like the little and symbol thing. Mm -hmm. And then C A Y A. And it's all one word, no spaces. All right. There you go. Okay, well, thank you guys for on coming. Give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> Starting early. So, y'all know that y'all are the leaders of the new school, right? The next generation, y'all are part of that. So, y'all be all starting off really, really at a good start. Thank you. All right, y'all. All right, you. we'll see you on YouTube. All right, we are not done. We have our final amazing guest here for another episode of Candy Fresh. We have Christopher Webley. How are you today, my friend? I'm well, I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Uh, hold up, though. Your hair is amazing. <laughs> and you. I will not go without noticing gray hair. I'm not going to touch it. For sure not going to touch it. But I got to say, it's really great. Did you do yourself? I did. I did. <laughs> it's called Good Bedhead. Good uh, Bedhead. <laughs> Okay, I appreciate that. So we're not here only to talk about your hair. We're talking about all the amazing things that you do. So the new rule, what's the new rule? Uh, yeah, so new rules. Uh, we are a development company. Uh, they got started back in 2015. Um, really to rethink, uh, reinvent uh, what development looks like in black and brown communities. Um, traditionally, real estate developers come in um, with an outside lens and a preconceived perception of how they want to develop the neighborhood. Um, we took a very different approach um, uh, to really listen to the, the community and actually 
um, create a space that aligned uh, directly back to what the community was asking for. Um, so currently in North, we operate a 4,000 square foot communal marketplace combining shared workspace, retail, and event space for creative entrepreneurs. All right, give it up for that alone. <laughs> Listening to the community is one thing of its own because people need to be heard, right? They just want that. They want that reassurance that someone's listening to them. And then to, to take it to the next level and to actually go through with some action is a different thing. So let's take it back one or two steps or five or ten, however many it goes back. How did this even come about? Where did this even come from, from conception to, to fruition? Uh, yeah, so I think a lot of uh, getting to the opening of new rules really stem from one, my upbringing of being one, a black male from the South, um, and really just wanting to uh, utilize my passion and gifts to uh, have impact in my community. Um, I've been in the corporate retail space for the last seven years and uh, got laid off. I was recruited here by Target mm. um, as a fabric engineer doing outerwear design. Um, got laid off when they had the big layoffs. Thank you, Target. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm right there with you. Yeah, no, I'm it was, right a, there with it was you. a really blessing in disguise. And uh, luckily, I made some really wise investments um, in real estate uh, prior to getting laid off. And so when I got laid off, I didn't have to sort of make a financial decision of what my next move would be. Cool. Um, so yeah, I got laid off, and we ended up buying, closing on a, the site that we're in currently. Um, and really, again, just sort of had a celebratory day to invite the community in. We had about 200 folks come out, uh, conducted a design thinking workshop, which is a, f a fancy word for saying we're going to listen to the community and, <laughs> and uh, do what they, they ask. And so we proto used that day to prototype solutions for how we wanted to utilize the space. Um, and it's sort of been iterative in nature since then, um, where our, sh our emphasis is design. Um, and so design is iterative in nature. and so. Uh, now being open two years, we're probably on our seventh iteration of um, the space always changing, uh, the programming always changing, pricing and things of that nature is always sort of this ongoing listening um, and, and dialogue to reinvent. There's a lot of moving parts to that. So how do people get acquainted with the platform? Do they go online? Do you guys do outreach through the community? Is there like an advisory council? Like how, what is the main vehicle to get in front of people and then take it to the next step on like working with them? Yeah, um, really for us it's word of mouth. Um, cool. We, that was somewhat strategic the first two years. Uh, Mondo and a lot of folks who were early adopters to our motto could tell you when you first came into this space, it was really just four walls and a door. Mm -hmm. um, to where now two years in, uh, you know, we have the amenities, the basic amenities that you would expect um, like, you know, sound, equipment, right. chairs, tables, like just very basic things that we didn't have. Sure. Um, so it's been very organic word of mouth. Um, we do a lot of strategic partnerships with uh, different groups in the neighbor neighborhood. Um, you know, we've done art galleries, workshops. Uh, we did a school of entrepreneurship um, a few weeks back. Um, so we're always doing different types of programming, again, to sort of reflect what the community's asked for via sort of this crowdsourcing model, so. That's um, amazing. I mean, yeah. word of mouth is the best way of referrals, right? It is, is, it is. You can social media the heck out of things, but to hear organic, you know, conversation from someone and their testimonies and how, you know, what their praises are is like the best way. So, you know, thanks Target for the layup, blessing in disguise. You know, you were prepared for that, but not everybody was. And look at what, you know, the journey has manifested too. So what is the scope? What's the next five to 10 years look like? Do you guys have like a roadmap or you just kind of, ooh, whatever comes? Yeah, no, uh, we are very, very strategic. Uh, I, have a very, I have an engineering background, so uh, every, smart man over here. it's very linear for me. Uh, we, are, we just announced that uh, uh, we got our liquor license, which uh, is subsequently ooh. triggering us to uh, open a, a cafe. Um, so that is in the, uh, the pipeline. Um, I like cafes. Yes. I like wine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, li I work for myself. I might just have to come hang out. You should do that. <laughs> you should do Y'all with me? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to fall under a different brand called Pesca. Um, again, we're starting off in sort of soup, salads, fresh salads, juices, and smoothies. Mm -hmm. um, so, so definitely come check us out. We're located at 2015 Lowry. Um, so our next two years uh, really going to be focused on uh, honing in on food, uh, really putting 
the pedal to the metal on our marketing. Okay. Um, again, the, we now have uh, what we think is an ecosystem to support uh, the local creative economy. Um, mm -hmm. So, so now it's about you know really getting folks through the door and letting them know what we have. Um, and then we're so we're a real estate development company. Um, we do. We were just awarded five additional parcels along Broadway through uh, the city RFP process. Congratulations! Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. So uh, those are underway. Um, they're planning on coming online uh, 2020. Um, so we have our, our waist deep in that, and so a lot of things that will um, sort of manifest as that yeah. as new buildings come online. I love that. So. To be a part of the community is obviously a given. If you live in the area or you know someone in the area, to donate, I'm sure, you know, you guys are always accepting probably furniture and funds. I mean, how can people learn about you? Where can they find you to be part of it, to contribute, and to help build this amazing platform? Yeah, uh, so we're on all social media platforms at New Rules North. Um, and then online, www.newrulesmn.com. Um, and, you know, our motto really at New Rules is, you know, we all have to have skin in the game. Everybody right. has have something to contribute, whether it's um, uh, sweat equity, whether it's finances, whether it's educational knowledge. Um, everybody has something to contribute. And our motto, uh, Mondo, and everybody's motto in this room doesn't work unless we all have skin in the game. So Everyone together yeah. makes the wheels turn. That's it. All right, one more round of applause for Christopher Webley. <laughs> Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. It's that candy fresh got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on. Get your shine on. Candy fresh gon' show up. Get your shine on. It's that candy fresh got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on. Get your shine on. Candy fresh gon' show up. Get your shine on. Oh, Kalik, that was a hot show. I had so much fun this episode. So much fun. New Can faces, dope places. Oh, my gosh. Can we give it a round of applause for our amazing, 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 amazing audience right here? Please, 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 please. We are so grateful to continue season three with amazing guests. We are so glad that Dario Otero was here tonight. Oh, yeah. Give it up. Give it a hand. Give it a hand. We have Mondo, the black tech guy. Yes, sir. And on top of that, we got Chris and Jen from Can Can Wonderland. Give them a round of applause. Yeah. We cannot forget about the sweetest vloggers in town, Cadence and Nakaya. Hey. Oh, oh, and of course, on the ones and twos, our new <laughs> DJ friend, Aquil. Aquil. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, man, I'm glad you guys are able to join us. And those who are at home, thanks again for viewing. And you guys are watching another episode of Candy Fresh. Fresh, got the new now next. If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on. Get your shine on. Candy Fresh, gonna show up. Get your shine on. Get your shine on. Candy Fresh, gonna show up. Get your shine on.